Today we're risking it all by opening up this right here, a beautiful Japanese booster box of Paradigm Trigger. This is equivalent to Silver Tempest, but in Japanese form. And I actually picked this up for dirt cheap while we were in Japan. I believe I paid about 45 or 50 Canadian dollars tax-free for this box. And we actually bought a couple. So here's the one that we're holding right now. We're gonna actually open it up in this video, but I bought a second one right here and a third uh, and this is, I believe, Space Juggler, which features the Palkia V-Star and one of the most expensive cards in the Sword and Shield era, Irida. The current value for these boxes is about double to triple what I paid, which is really nice. So we're not necessarily risking it all by paying resale for one of these boxes or market value for one of these boxes right now, since we did buy it in Japan for dirt cheap from the Pokemon Center. You also might be wondering, why aren't these wrapped up? If you buy any sealed booster boxes from the Pokemon Centers in Japan, they'll take off that plastic seal to prevent you from essentially reselling it at certain places because uh, who's gonna trust a box that's been, you know, the seal's taken off. Now, if you don't know, we actually pulled two of these cards right here, the alternate art Lugia V from Silver Tempest. I actually traded one in to Manta Trading and this is the one I'm personally keeping. Now, the Japanese version looks much better. Well, not dramatically better, but the textures on it are really cool and the value of it are like triple the value of the English version. So the most expensive card in this set that we can pull today is the Lugia V alternate art and currently the ungraded version of it goes for about 380 to 400 US dollars. If you get it in a PSA 10, it's about 675 to 700 US dollars. Now the next big cards in the set are of course the full art Candice along with the alternate art Reggie Drago V, the gold Lugia V star, the unknown V alternate art, and the rainbow rare Lugia V star. And to make this a little more fun to celebrate hitting 20,000 subscribers, I also asked you guys on Instagram at SneakerTalkTCG and my YouTube community post to ask me some questions. They could be Pokemon related or not. And we're gonna answer as many as we can until we run out of packs. Also, huge thank you again to Manta Trading because they blessed me. They blessed me this beautiful oh. Pikachu Squishmallow, which I just I absolutely love and adore it. It's so squishy. I love it. I love it. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to buy any Pokemon cards at all, check out mantatrading.com and use code SneakerTalkTCG to save 5%. All the Japanese Pokemon cards that we pull today that I don't want to keep in my personal collection will be for sale on my eBay store. I'll leave a link down below. On May 1st, I'll have a big stock update. So uh, check out my eBay store. It's the best way to support the channel other than watching the videos or sharing them. So without further ado, here we go. Paradigm Trigger. Can we pull the alternate art Lugia V. We're gonna put this one here in English to the side or we'll put it right there. We might do a live stream for the other box that I have or the Space Juggler set because I think that'd be a fun experience to share with you uh, share with you guys live. So here we go. We'll do the left side of the booster box first. And I think the packs are uh, a little lighter in terms of the quantity of cards. I think it's like five cards of each uh, each pack. The very first question comes in from Raj underscore R5 on Instagram. It is, what do you do with your bulk cards? Now, what I typically do is I store them in ETBs and tins. And I don't know if there's any card tricks, so we're not gonna bother with a card trick. But I store them in ETBs and tins, and they've just been chilling in my room for the most part. Uh, sometimes, uh, whoa, there we go. Very nice, first pack magic. We got the Lugia V-Star right off the riff, right to right, right on the first pack, man. That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. That looks beautiful. So uh, yeah, Lugia V-Star. First pack magic, let's freaking go. We'll put it to the side here. I like to store them in the boxes and I was saving them because I was gonna go to the store out in Mississauga that takes regular bulk, but uh, they're, they're far, they're in Mississauga. So Manta actually is now, now taking bulk in. So if you wanna sell your bulk to Manta, go in and store. Uh, I'm gonna be selling a bunch of bulk to them today. So hopefully uh, I'll get some good amount of money from that. A Lipard and a Tangrowth. So there's no guarantee of a hollow or reverse hollow at all in these packs that we're opening up. So if you pull anything, it's like extra nice. It's gonna be extra memorable. And I know there's like a little rip. You can always see that right there on the top right hand corner. The Japanese packs have that little slit right there that you can uh, just pull and it'll open the pack up right there. So let's get to this pack and let's get to the next question right after. We got Victini, Rockruff, uh, Archon, I believe, and a Zeraora 
with an armadillo. Armadillo. All right. Next question is coming in from Patrick Badgy. Still play the Digimon TCG at all? P.S. Love the content. And my answer to that is nope. I've completely quit Digimon. I'm going all in on Pokemon. Uh, I figured that if I was going to play Pokemon at the best level that I could, I can't really be juggling multiple card games at the same time and we got a chespin i believe chespin v or the evolve form of that and a blossom so another v card to pull and this one will probably be for sale on ebay if not if it's like not enough uh, valuable of a card uh, i'm just gonna throw it in for free like i always put freebies in my orders all right next question comes in from lalao sir how much does the average trip to japan cost big fan since your sneaker days hey thank you for uh, rocking with me from the sneaker days i appreciate it now the average trip from japan to japan is going to vary based off the country you're flying in from the flight is easily the most expensive thing to any travel of course like it's just so expensive to fly to japan so if you can you definitely want to book your flight a couple months in advance but on average i think we paid like or when i say we i say uh, myself we pay like 1300 canadian dollars for a round trip and then a couple hundred dollars for hotels and stuff and then once you're actually there the food there everything else is really cheap uh, besides that and if you don't if you're only just staying in like a couple cities you don't need that big jr rail pass that takes you across the whole country then you can save a couple hundred dollars that way too so it's hard to say because it really just depends on where you're from um, i'm gonna say uh maybe two thousand dollars like all in everything next question and next pack this one's gonna come in from B Bastions, do you have any pre-tournament rituals, be it for calming, ever, calming nerves or getting your head in the zone? Ooh, pre-tournament rituals, that is a good one. Typically, I just like to blast some, some drum and bass music or the Pokemon theme song, like the opening theme song was like, I wanna be the very best. Uh, I'll I'll play that right before going into the tournament, but usually just some like drum and bass music, which is my favorite genre. And a Earthern Seal Stone for the Hollow card right there. And a Raichu. This Raichu is actually really really good. Slap a Choice Belt, and you're one at KOing uh, Lugia V Stars with this. Just gotta get yourself in the zone. Say you have a couple losses or ties under your belt. You don't want to let that get to your head. You have to go into the rounds kind of like with a blank slate, and you don't want to hold yourself. Uh, Hold, hold yourself in like a negative headspace uh, if you do end up with a couple of early losses in a tournament. And we got a Luxio, no Luxray, a Luxray right there. Mervy Boy, it is, what's your favorite evolution? Mine is Jolteon. Well, my favorite evolution of all time is definitely gonna have to be Umbreon. I'm a big Umbreon fan. I'm sure a lot of you guys are too. Umbreon is, I think, the most popular out of all of them. Uh, and then my second favorite, would have to be Leafeon. I'm a big fan of Leafeon. And we got a Medicham Hollow Rare right there. The Hollows, man, the Hollows look so cool. I love the Hollows from the Japanese Sword and Shield era. All right, next pack and our next question, Pokemon Manga 96 asked, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start collecting Pokemon cards? Very good question. I do want to do a full like in-depth video uh, for this sort of topic. However, uh, the most surface level or quickest response or reply I could give to this question would be to go on websites like tcgplayer.com or uh, just any other websites that have like the whole database of Pokemon cards and try and figure out, you know, what kind of sets interest you, whether it's from a competitive play or for a collectible uh, collectible standpoint because buying singles is always the cheapest thing to do but if you want to open up packs I don't blame you opening up packs is really fun we're doing it right now uh, then if you're opening up packs that can specifically benefit you in terms of getting you the competitive cards you want or the cards you want to collect that's always going to be those better kind of packs to buy just figure out what kind of collector you want to be you don't have to buy you know you don't have to go for a master set for every set some people like to collect Pokemon cards for certain artists like my girlfriend loves clay Pokemon and they're all done by Yukimori there's another artist that specifically only does like wool Pokemon or Pokemon made out of yarn. Some people have trainer gallery binders. So you can kind of like uh, divide your binders or your collection in certain ways you want to do. And we got an Amistar V as our next pull. Last question from Instagram and then we're going to get to the rest all from the YouTube community section. So uh, this one comes in from Cheeseburger. It is, will you make a video on how to play the Hisuian Zorark deck? Great question, I will. That's gonna be the next deck profile video on the channel. I'm actually playing a Hisuian Zorark V-Star deck today at Manta for their $10 uh, weekly tournament this week. And it's a really, really fun list. It's actually a list that won a major 
uh, tournament or like sort of like a League Cup kind of tournament in Japan. So uh, I've been having great success with that list. So yeah, we'll have a tournament vlog of that very soon. And we got a Lyron for that last pack or last card right there. And let's get to the YouTube questions up next. Under CDG, the question is, if a genie made you choose between a Pokemon card that you've always wanted or a sneaker grail, which would you pick? I would have to definitely go with a sneaker grail uh, because I will use those sneakers as much as I can. So I, I would do that. I would I would use the genie to pick a sneaker grail. And that exact sneaker, hmm. That exact sneaker is hard to say. It's really hard to say. Maybe one of the Nike Yeezys. I really like the Nike Yeezys, uh, both the Yeezy 1 and the Yeezy 2. Those are sick. Next question comes in from Daniel Cantu 2. Also, I recognize a lot of these names. Daniel, I appreciate you always being active. Uh, so if I see anyone's names I recognize a lot, I'll give them some extra love. But Daniel asks, if Pokemon were real, which ones would you be afraid of encountering on your daily commute? That is a pretty solid question. So I don't really commute too often. I'd probably say my daily commute is just like walking to the post office to ship out Pokemon cards to you guys or to like McDonald's uh, grabbing a nice coffee and whatnot. So I'd probably have to go with uh, maybe like a coughing, like a coughing or a muck or a wheezing, those kind of stuff. Maybe like a Ekans. I would hate to like run across a snake on my walk, uh, on my walk to the post office. That would probably be a little traumatizing. All right, we got a Shinx, we got a Tangela, we got a Thingy, and a Lugia V. There we go. Oh man, Mitsuhira Arita nailed it on this art. It is so nice. And now we have two Lugias. There are currently three more we need to pull from this set. The regular, oh, sorry, the Gold V Star, the Rainbow Rare V Star, and the alternate art V. Two Lugias in one box. If I was a player and like I bought this box right when it came out, I would be so hyped because Lugias used to be crazy expensive. Next up, we have the right hand side to get to and some more questions from you lovely people in the community. So the next one comes in from Joshi Poo. I also recognize your name. How much money have you spent on code cards? And sorry for the double question, but what are your plans for future content? So how much have we spent on code cards? To be honest, not all that much, but the thing is, is I opened a ton of packs. So that's, that's why I don't need to buy a lot of code cards. Um, but people buy code cards pretty often because uh, it's a good way to grow your collection online. And uh, people used to like trade uh, packs for individual cards, but now you get credits out of them if you're on the PTCG Live. So in total, I want to say I spent about 50 to 60 Canadian dollars on, uh, on code cards. Future plans for content on this channel. Uh, I just want to get way more consistent than I already am. I'm not as consistent as I want to get, so uh, as I want to be. So I want to get more consistent on the channel. So expect daily or bi-daily uh, content. An Elgium and a unknown V-Star. Very, very cool card. In terms of upcoming content planned, I am still heavily procrastinating on a lot of Japan vlogs. So we have about eight to 10 Japan vlogs to still upload. Uh, I wanna do a lot more tournament vlog content. For now, we were, do we're doing a bunch of YouTube shorts for the tournament vlogs. I wanna do more deck profiles. Deck, pro deck profiles and gameplay, uh, that's, that's a big, I really wanna get into that big time. And uh, just more vlogs, more more Pokemon vlogs. Hey, nice, a golden uh, poncho. I forget what the exact name is for this, but it's a poncho. And this card allows you to not get bosses ordered or Serena up for your V-Star or V-Max Pokemon. So pretty cool. We pulled a gold card right there. And that means we're not likely to pull a super, super crazy, crazy card now. Cause this is a UR. Oh, I, I thought it was gonna be like a SR or something. I might be wrong, but a lot of the luck, like these, these boxes don't have the same pull rates as English counterparts. So that gold card is a lot of luck involved right there. So that probably used up a lot of the luck, but we got uh, about 10, 11, 12 packs left. And the next question comes in from John Reyes. It is, are you considering buying or renting a house in Toronto in the far future? Or do you see yourself living somewhere affordable? So Toronto is one of the most expensive cities in the world. I think for a two bedroom like condo, the average price is about $3,000, which is nuts. And uh, I actually was renting for a year downtown in downtown Toronto. I had a really sick penthouse condo. Uh, I was paying 2,600 a month in rent for that. 
and it was right when COVID happened. So I took a big L. I lived downtown, didn't get to take advantage of living downtown because the whole city was on lockdown for a couple of years. And uh, that was probably one of my biggest regrets because <laughs> it was so almost like an impulsive kind of move. Uh, so no plans to rent or buy anytime soon. We're living at home with our parents right now, you know, back to back to the home base. I'm enjoying my last couple of years that I have with Misty because Misty's going to probably, uh, uh, you know, move on in a couple of years because she's getting to that age. We got Hisui and Arcanine V talking about dogs. We got Hisui and Arcanine V, pretty cool card. I'm not in a rush right now, but eventually I'll get a spot uh, down the road. All right, next question comes in from It's Reflect. What's your most expensive card in my collection? Hard to say, probably my Lugia V alternate art uh, that I just showed you guys a second ago. This one right here, I, I think that would be it. Yeah, now that I think about it. I probably have something else, but that's like the one that comes to mind right away. And Candice. Also, it's Reflect, appreciate you, homie, you always active. I always see you. All right, next question comes in from Brandon J Painting. What would you fight? 1,000 diglet size Gyarados or one Gyarados size diglet? I would love to fight one Gyarados size diglet. That, that seems like fun. That seems like a good time. <laughs> that's, that'd be weird. All right, I got an Ari Ariados. Hollow rare, any regenerative energy. Next question comes in from Lizzie Liz H, which is, what is your favorite childhood movie and uh, and movie snack? So my favorite movie snack would have to be nachos with salsa and cheese. That's like, oh, S tier, without a doubt. Or uh, some, you know, nice buttery popcorn with some like cheddar, cheddar uh, seasoning or whatever. And we got a Brandon, I believe, right there. Favorite childhood movie? It's hard to say. I was a huge fan of The Wizard of Oz growing up. I think that was a big one for me. Or Max Keeble's Big Move. Core movies in my memory, <laughs> my memory bank. All right, next question comes in from Randomly. What is your favorite Pokemon deck in this current format? In this current format, my favorite Pokemon deck would have to be Hisui and Zarek V-Star. I haven't played around with too many crazy, crazy decks right now. Uh, but yeah, that's the one I'm really enjoying at the moment. We got Zara or In your opinion, what is the best card in Scarlet and Violet base set? Mine is Illustration, the Illustration Rare Maridon EX. That's an amazing card. I would have to say that card, the Illustration Rare Maridon EX or the Illustration Rare Miriam. This card is absolutely beautiful as well. Uh, but I do like the Maridon a lot. That one looks so sick. All right, we got Shaiman. Skrulpy thingy, that other thingy, and a Torakion and Lance. Five more packs remaining and a bunch of questions left still. So we got Phoenix underscore 88, uh, also another a loyal active member in the community. Their question is, what's your favorite food and drink? Favorite drink would have to be a tie between like some, some mango slush, uh, like a mango bubble tea kind of thing, or mango juice or iced coffee. Those are up there. And then favorite thing to eat. Favorite thing to eat, dude. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. I really love, uh, I love crab legs. I love chicken wings. Let's go with chicken wings. I'm a huge fan of chicken wings. Ramen, oh, ramen. Uh, that's a hard to pick one, bro. It's so hard to pick one. All right, and a other weird dragon thing. Colin Muller asks, uh, also another super, super active person in the community. Appreciate you, fam. Uh, if you show, if you close a bottle so hard that you cannot open it anymore, are you too strong or too weak? That's a really good question. I'd say you're too strong. Yeah, you're too strong for your own good. You also probably exerted all your power and your stamina points, I guess, on closing the bottle. And we got a Skunk Tank V. Oh, this is another Pokemon too. I would be scared to see. Uh, I would be scared of seeing on my daily walk. This is a, ugh, ugh. Get out of here. I don't want to see it. And a worker. Next question comes in from Yudovix from Ohio. Hey, what's up? We might be going to NAC this year for the, uh, or Columbus, Ohio for NAC this year. Their question is, what is my favorite color? My favorite color is red. My favorite color is red, but up until the age of nine, it was green. It was green for a long, long time. And then I was like, yo, red's better. Red, red's definitely better. All right, next pack, we got Jack T Jack's TCG Corner. Their question is, how did you get into Pokemon? Very simple question. I grew up in an, uh, an era where Pokemon was a part of pretty much mainstream culture. You couldn't escape it. Pokemon was everywhere, on TV, on lunch boxes, on backpacks, uh, everywhere. And we got Rapidash. And this is actually the Silver Tempest art from the uh, pre-release promo. If you get it from the build and battle kits, really cool Rapidash. So yeah, I just grew up with Pokemon. It was just always there. 
Um, I even had like per Pokemon themed birthday parties and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I just grew up with Pokemon. Last question, and this is probably the most important question of the day. Uh, and it's our last pack as well. This one comes in from Little Luki and also has five likes. The question here is, how do you get a girlfriend? That is a really, really good question. And uh, you're, if you're asking a Pokemon card YouTuber how to get a girlfriend, I'll, I'll give you a response. Bruh. So the quickest answer I can give you because we're about to finish this last pack would have to be make her laugh, find several common interests that you guys have in common that you can easily talk about because common interests are very important. Whether it's music or activities you like to do, sports, that stuff. So make them laugh. Um, smell good, smelling good is important. Wear deodorant, brush your teeth, uh, wear some nice cologne of some sort, or at least just do the minimum, wear deodorant. And then, um, yeah, come up with like inside jokes and stuff like that. And eventually you will capture your first girlfriend. So yeah, good luck with that. And a frost last with Candace in the background. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, click on screen to watch another one. And I hope you have an amazing, amazing week. Peace out. Also, good luck if you actually need a girlfriend. I got mine off Tinder. It was, yeah, yeah, I got, I got mine off Tinder. Seven years strong, let's go.